Nvidia sold $35 billion worth of semiconductors last quarter, but Nvidia doesn't actually make semiconductors. If that sounds confusing, don't worry. Nvidia is what's known as a fabless chip designer. That means that they design these advanced semiconductor chips, but they don't actually put them together. They're not building semiconductor chips. They're outsourcing that to a company called TSMC, or Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. And clearly, NVIDIA's business model is pretty lucrative because last quarter they had net profit margins of 55%. That means half of their top line sales went to the bottom line in the form of profits. So NVIDIA is clearly doing something right. And that's how they became a $3 trillion company. Now, Taiwan Semiconductor, like I said, very important. We couldn't have semiconductor chips without them, and that's why they're a nearly $1 trillion company. But back in the times of the gold rush, they said that the people who got rich were selling picks and shovels because everybody was out there digging for gold, and they needed picks and shovels in order to actually dig for gold. So in the AI semiconductor gold rush, perhaps it's worth taking a look at the picks and shovels of semiconductors. Not NVIDIA not TSMC, but these little guys here. There are four companies that are much smaller, between 100 billion and 300 billion, so still large, but smaller than Nvidia and TSMC, that specialize in what's known as wafer fab equipment. These are machines that get sold to companies like TSMC, and these machines are responsible for actually building semiconductors. So without these four companies, and there are more than four, but these are the four key players, without these four companies, Nvidia would have no way of selling chips because they couldn't make them. So today, let's look at these semiconductor manufacturing process because it is quite complex but also quite interesting and we'll look at these four key players that trade on US exchanges and see what I think of these four interesting stocks it's always a good day when I get to make a PowerPoint presentation so today I put together a little PowerPoint presentation to explain the different steps of semiconductor manufacturing like I said it's a very complex process and as you might expect it starts with silicon which is a metal silicon is the key ingredient in a semiconductor because of its conductive properties so essentially you take this rock you melt it down into this salami, and then you cut it up into these little wafers. If it's making you hungry, I'm sorry. That's the first step, and it only gets more complicated from there. Once you have a wafer, it goes through a process called deposition. And as you can imagine, the first part of the word deposition is deposit. So there's going to be some depositing of material onto the semiconductor. So let's say this semiconductor is this orange and black, gray, brown, whatever color this is. This is your semiconductor. This little yellow icing is what's deposited on top. And this is what happens in deposition. A blanket of conducting materials is deposited onto the wafer so that it can be tucked in and sleep well at night. This picture is extremely zoomed in because as with anything with semiconductors, they are very, very tiny. And these layers of deposition are really only a few atoms thick. They're the building blocks that help create transistors and interconnects on a semiconductor. And there are two key players in this space. The main one is a company called Applied Materials, which I happen to own shares of, and another company called Lamb Research, which Lamb has a different specialty, but they also have dabbled in the deposition phase. After deposition, a semiconductor gets coated with this light sensitive coating called a photoresist, and there's several companies that do that, none of which have a key leadership position. But then what's really interesting is that it goes through a lithography machine. And if you know anything about semiconductor manufacturing, you're likely very familiar with ASML. They are the key player in photolithography for semiconductors. In fact, they are the only company that offers extreme ultraviolet lithography, which is how you can get very, very, very small details on a semiconductor chip. They use light that has wavelengths as small as 13.5 nanometers. For reference, that's a fraction of a grain of sand. So these are very, very small beams of light. And essentially what happens is that a semiconductor wafer goes through this machine and ASML's machines beam sort of a stencil of light onto the chip in these very, very small, very, very advanced patterns. And as you can imagine, with anything so small, if anything gets bumped around or if there's other particles in there, it can mess things up. So ASML has a really cool approach in that their machines are dynamic. So if something goes wrong, ASML can try again, accounting for what went wrong so that you get the perfect end result. It's a very, very interesting company. And that's why they're the leader in this photolithography. They've invested billions and billions of dollars and they are truly a monopoly in EUV lithography. So you can think of lithography as a stencil and then we need to actually cut out the stencil and that's where LAM research comes in. The next step is etching. So after photolithography, the areas of the wafer that have been marked are then etched away to create tiny patterns of transistors. And after etching, some semiconductor chips, not all, but some may need a power up. So in a video game, like let's say you're playing Mario and he eats the mushroom and he gets all big, there's something similar for semiconductors and it's known as ion implantation. So this is a way to power up a semiconductor chip to alter their properties, to make them more durable, more energy efficient, more advanced. And it's being used increasingly 
recently in SICK applications, which is silicon carbide. These types of chips are used for things like industrial automation and electric vehicles that tend to require a lot of power. And there are two key players in this space. While it's a very small market, you have David and Goliath. So the David in this case is Excellus Technologies, and the Goliath is Applied Materials. Excellus, very small company. Applied Materials, very large company. However, they both have pretty equal market share in this small market. And finally, we have inspection, metrology, testing, and packaging. I lumped these all together even though they are technically all different segments, but once you have this chip that's been deposited, it's been through the lithography machine, it's been etched, it's had its ions implanted, it goes to the final step. So inspection, as you might expect, is just simply inspecting the semiconductor chip to make sure that everything turned out okay. As you can see, it went through a lot of steps and there's a lot of things that could go wrong along the way. So companies like KLA Corporation, which stands for Keep Looking Ahead, quite interesting, provide equipment for inspection as well as metrology. Now metrology is a word that most people probably aren't familiar with. It's essentially the precise measurement of electrical properties. So a semiconductor chip can go through a KLA machine and make sure that it actually has the conductive properties that a semiconductor conductor chip should have. Like I said, KLA holds a key position in that market, but there are some smaller competitors, Nova and Onto Innovation, as well as Applied Materials. Applied Materials likes to get its fingers in every step. There's also the testing phase where a semiconductor is tested, and this market is controlled by Teradyne and Advantest. And then packaging, where once it's been processed, the chips are cut out from a wafer and packaged. The main companies that handle that are Amcor and ASE. Phew, so there you go. That is the semiconductor process and how each main company has a role along the way. And even though I split this into a few segments, these segments are not all created equal. Here's a graph of the wafer fab, which is simply the foundry where the chips are made, like TSMC, wafer fab equipment market share by type of equipment. So as you can see, all of these different markets are different sizes. Like I said, ion implant, very small market, all things considered. It's less than $3 billion. But patterning, things like lithography, is a giant market, $31 billion. And even though I only mentioned four key companies in my analysis, there are plenty of companies that are involved in wafer fab equipment. One that I didn't mention today is Tokyo Electron, which you can see has its hand in a lot of different areas. The reason I didn't mention this company is because they only trade on the Japanese Tokyo Exchange, and there is no ADR for US investors. So I tried to limit it just to the four companies that are available on US exchanges, but if you are interested in diversifying a bit, it might be worth looking into Tokyo Electron as well, because as you can see, they have their hand in multiple markets. So the first thing that you can take away from this graph is that Applied Materials is the generalist. They have a leadership position in three different markets, ion implant, deposition, and thinning in CMP. They also have a small position in metrology and dry etching. The other companies are a bit more specialized. Specifically, ASML only deals with lithography, but they have a massive market share in lithography. KLA really only deals with this metrology and testing, but they have a massive market share in that market. LAM Research is a bit of both, where they're a bit generalized in these three steps, but they are mostly specialized on etching. So it's interesting how each company has its own niche, and that this is really a competitive space. So let's now go over to my Disruptive Growth Stock spreadsheets and see how these companies look from a financial perspective to see if any of them are worth investing in today. So I've mapped out the four key wafer fab equipment companies and sorted them by market cap. We can see ASML is the largest at about $300 billion in market cap, and the other three are similar at about $100 billion in market cap. Now, this spreadsheet did recently get a makeover, but this is the same spreadsheet that I've been using on this channel, where I rate companies on four factors, and those are gross margins, price to annualized sales, which measures valuation, revenue growth, and total annualized revenue, which shows how much market share the company has captured. I give each company a score from negative one to five for each of these four factors and aggregate it. So the average score on my spreadsheet is about 12, and the the average score for these semiconductor equipment companies is 12 and a half. So clearly these companies are doing something right. And the two highest scoring companies of these four are LAM Research and KLA, which both get a nice 13.3. So let's quickly talk about why those companies score so well on my spreadsheet. And it's actually the two companies that I don't own. I actually own ASML and AMAT. So I'll tell you why I decided to own these two companies, even though they do score not as highly on my spreadsheet. So let's start with ASML. As we can see, ASML is the largest semiconductor manufacturing equipment company by revenue. They are expecting to bring in $34 billion in revenue. By the way, all of these metrics are using guidance as opposed to the numbers that have just been reported. So if the companies miss guidance, this might change. 
but let's just assume they're all going to hit guidance. They're expected to grow strongly at about 15% this year, and their price to annualized sales is 8, which is actually the highest of the four companies, and that's interesting. However, I think that ASML does deserve its higher valuation. When we go back to this chart with the different markets, ASML is clearly a monopoly in patterning or lithography. They're the only ones developing EUV lithography, so if you really need advanced semiconductors, you need an ASML machine. You can get away with larger beams of light for less advanced semiconductor chips, but for top of the line chips, there's really no alternative. So I believe that the market sees ASML's monopoly position and is giving them a bit higher valuation. We can see that their PE is also higher, not just price to sales, as well as price to free cash flow. Now, price to free cash flow, you kind of have to take with a grain of salt for ASML because this is quite a capital intensive business. So some years they may spend more on capital expenditures, some years they might spend less. So expect this price to free cash flow to change. I would more closely monitor PE in this case because you can depreciate those capital expenses. So even though ASML has this higher valuation for lower growth, I still think that that is warranted because of their monopoly position. But then what about applied materials? Why do I own applied materials if it's only growing 7% where their competitors are growing 23% and 27%. Well, let's go back to that chart again. Applied materials, like I said, is the generalist. So if I want exposure to all the different steps in the semiconductor manufacturing process through just one company, I can buy applied materials. And yes, they're going to show slower growth right now during the bull cycle, but during the bear cycle, they're also going to show a less negative revenue growth number. Keep in mind that semiconductors are a cyclical business, so there will be bull runs and there will be downturns. So right now, companies like TSMC are building out their fabs and buying the most advanced equipment because of the latest super cycle in semiconductor chips. However, once that slows down, they're not going to be buying as much equipment, and it's very likely that you might see negative growth for companies like ASML, LAM Research, and KLA. However, applied materials might not see that negative growth because they are so diversified. This is a double-edged sword. You're going to see less growth when things are good, but you're also going to see more stability when things are bad. So that's why I own applied materials. And even though they are showing a little bit less revenue growth right now, it's still positive and they still bring in a ton of revenue. They bring in about the same amount of revenue as LAM and KLA combined. So in my mind, you're getting two for the price of one with applied materials. However, that's not to say that I'm not interested in LAM Research or KLA Corp. Both of these companies, like I said, are growing very rapidly, and that's the plus side of being a specialist. If you specialize in one area of semiconductor manufacturing, then your customers are more likely to buy from you in that one area. Why would they buy an applied materials machine for etching when LAM Research is the specialist in etching? Why would they buy an applied materials metrology machine when KLA is the specialist in metrology? So Truly, what might be the best idea if you're somebody who wants to get exposure to these semiconductor manufacturing companies, why not consider investing in all four because they are all different and they all have their own niches. You have the monopoly specialist, you have the generalist, and you have the other two specialists in LAM and KLA. By investing in these four companies, you'd be getting exposure to all of the key markets in the wafer fab equipment. As always, this is not financial advice, just something to think about. So it may be worth adding these companies to your watch list and seeing which one deserves a spot in your portfolio, if any. So to summarize, Nvidia is seeing rapid growth due to increased demand for its AI chips. Nvidia doesn't actually make the chips, TSMC does. And while TSMC continues to need to make more and more chips, they're going to continue to need to buy equipment from these four companies, ASML, Applied Materials, KLA, and LAM Research. I believe that these four companies are the picks and shovels in this case, if you can consider AI to be the new gold rush. And while I think they present their own risks, I think that with all of the hype surrounding companies like NVIDIA and TSMC, they may have been left behind a little bit, as their valuations are quite reasonable, especially given that they're all growing quite strongly. Keep in mind there are plenty of risks surrounding these companies, so one of the categories on my spreadsheet is international sales, so this shows the percentage of sales that come from outside of the United States. And like I said, one of their key customers is TSMC, which is a Taiwanese company which faces geopolitical risks. But they also, all four of these companies have significant revenue from China. And as you may know, there are significant fears around tariffs and restrictions to China. Three of these companies, Applied Materials, LAM Research, and KLA, are American, and so they might be subject to these restrictions. ASML, being a Dutch company, would also still potentially be subject to tariffs and restrictions as well. So we need to keep in mind geopolitical risks, which may also be impacting these companies' valuations. However, if you can look past that, we have companies that are all reasonably valued with valuations between, let's say, five to nine times price to sales, 
and PE ratios in the 20s and 30s, which is average or below average if you look at the market. I think each of these four companies merits a closer look, and while I do own ASML and Applied Materials, I'm going to be keeping LAM Research and KLA on my watch list, and if they do see any kind of significant pullbacks, I might look to open a position in them down the road. Thank you guys so much for watching the video today. Let me know down below in the comments which of these four companies you like the looks of, and let me know what you'd like to see me cover next. I like to do stock deep dives, earnings analyses, and just any kind of stock-related videos, so if you have an idea, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe if you're new. Have a great day.